a reciprocating engine and this one is your piston this one is connecting rod this one is crank this one is center of crank let us assume that the crank is rotating in this direction at a speed equal to omega let theta is the angle made by the crank let r is the radius of the crank let l is the length of connecting rod this one is connecting rod l is the length of connecting let's say gamma is the angle made by the crank with the line of stroke this one is gamma is the angle made by let we define one term that is called as n and is the ratio of l divided by r length of connecting rod divided by crank radius naturally the length of crank is always greater than crank radius so is this value is always greater than unity and is it a very very large value as compared to one so in today's lecture we want to find out what are the forces involved on the receiving mass this one is called as receiving to find out the forces what we required is force is given by what mass into acceleration and we can write this term as m into what x double dot to find out acceleration we must know first velocity and to find out velocity was first of all we must know the displacement so first of all i will develop the equation for displacement then we go for velocity then we'll go for acceleration and then see what will happen to this slider crank mechanism imagine that this crank is at this position now that is at this position when the crank is at this position is a connecting rod will extend from this side will go to this side and at the given instant is this is called as dead center right now is this piston is some distance away from the dead center let call distance equals to let call this distance equals to x distance so at any time from top dead center what is the current position of the piston we can find out so x is the distance from tdc of the piston so is the distance between tdc to this crank center is this distance if extended this r will come here and l we go this side so is this total distance is l plus r x and l plus r i want to find out this distance from here to here for this purpose what i do is that i will draw perpendicular from this point and if i draw this perpendicular i will extend this perpendicular to this side and i will say that is this distance plus this distance is it same as l plus r plus x so this distance is is it l this one is gamma this one is 90 so is this distance is l cos of gamma l cos gamma and this one is theta this one is r so is this small distance is distance is r cos theta so can we say that the distance x is equals to the total distance is l plus r minus this distance is l cos gamma this distance is what r cos theta in this equation the value of x is dependent on gamma and value of x is also dependent on theta so right now x is a function of gamma and theta to make this difference is simple we'll try to make the derivative of x with respect to one function only so we'll try to have some relation between theta and gamma so we want to make some relation between theta and gamma i want to establish relation between gamma and theta for this i will apply sine law according to sine law the side of a triangle that is r is always proportional to sine of the angle opposite to it so r divided by sin gamma is always equals to l divided by sin of theta so i have definite relation between sin gamma and sin theta so what is value of sin gamma value of sin gamma equals to is it r divided by l is it multiplied by sin theta so i am successfully developed the relation for sin gamma but i am need in what what cos gamma so what is cos gamma can we write cos gamma is equals to under root of 1 minus sin square gamma this what is my n is it l by r and this one is what r by l so is this term is sin theta 
divided by n. Cos gamma I written as basically cos gamma, cos square theta plus sin square theta equal to 1. So cos gamma equal to under root of 1 minus sin square gamma is equals to under root of 1 minus sin square theta divided by n what is that value so if i take out n square common it will become under root of n square minus sin square theta and finally i will take down n common is it 1 by n into bracket is it n square minus sin square theta for what cos gamma now here can we replace this L as a product of N multiplied by R? This L will replace as product of N multiplied by R plus R. I open the bracket. This one is minus L. Is minus L is same as N into R. So this is N into R. Can we replace cos gamma by this term? So is 1 upon minus, this is minus and plus, is it another minus? This one is R and we will write this equals to cos theta. Now what is the difference between previous equation and this equation? Is this term of x is entirely function now of theta only? Is it a single valid function? And previously it was a function of what? Gamma and theta. So this is very easily differentiable now. So at any instant, if you want to find out displacement x and if you know the crank radius and the connecting rod length and you want, you want to know what is the crank, then you just substitute this value, you will get your position. And the derivative of this one with respect to, derivative of this with respect to time, is it a velocity? Yes, sir. But remember one thing, here x is a function of theta. So if you want a velocity, you have to differentiate x with respect to what? Theta. In that case, it was calculated as dx by d theta multiplied by d theta by dt. Is it correct? What is d theta by dt? Rate of change of angular velocity. Is it omega? Omega. So this equals to what? V. Uh, this equals to what? Omega multiplied by what? dx by d theta. Agree? This term is dx by dt. dx by dt is same as dx by theta is same as d theta by dt. But what is d theta by dt? Is omega. So omega is extra term we are getting. Okay. Now tell me what is the derivative of sin theta? Derivative of sin theta is what? Cos theta. And what is the derivative of cos theta? Minus sin theta. My poly if it is a sin square term, is it correct? Then is it two times sin theta? First is same, two times sin theta, then multiplied by what? Cos theta. Okay? So we have a composite function here. So you have to handle very carefully. First is velocity is dx by dt. That is the derivative you have to obtain with respect to what? Time. With respect to time, neither the crank radius will change, neither the length will change. They are always fixed. So is the derivative of the first term is 0? If the derivative of the first term, this one is 0. And this n cancel out. We left with minus r. <coughs> now this one is under root sign. So x to the power 1 by 2. Derivative is 1 by 2, x to the power, minus 1 by 2. And the composite function will handle separately. So this is multiplied by 1 by 2. This one is n square minus sin square theta. Is it to the power minus 1 by 2? To differentiate this, so I will open bracket. What is the derivative of n square? 0. Now, what is the derivative of minus sin square theta? So, first is minus 2. Is it sin theta? Multiplied by what? Cos theta. And one term is of what? Omega. That is this entire term. Is it multiplied by d theta by dt? 
correct? Is it first is okay? Now start with second term. Is it minus r? What is the derivative of cos theta? Minus? Is it again multiplied by d theta by dd? That complete derivation. Now we have two term. One term is this one and one term is this one. Is both the term contains r? So we'll take out r common. So this one is v. r is common. Now we'll open the bracket. This minus sign, this minus 2 sin theta and this minus sign, is it positive sign? 2 sin theta into cos theta, is it divided by, I think this 2 and this 2 also cancel. This 2 and this 2 cancel. So let eliminate this. And this power is what? Minus 1 by 2. Can we write this term as n square minus sin square theta to the power 1 by 2 now? Okay, this all thing finish and multiplied by what? Omega. This omega and this omega I will keep it outside. So I will write here this one is omega. I have to write this term. Is it minus minus is plus? So this one is plus. R is already out. And is this term is sin theta? Okay. This term I am able to write down sin 2 theta. If I multiply by 2 extra and then immediately divide by what? 2. Now as far as denominator is considered, this one is n square. And what is n? Is it L by R? And is this ratio is very large as compared to 1? What is the value of sin theta? If the maximum value of sin theta is 1. Maximum value of sin theta is 1. So is this ratio that is n square and sin square theta, is it almost as good as n square? Because we are assuming here n equal to what? L by R. Length of connecting rod is very very large as compared to crank radius. So what we do is that n square is this term is very very large as compared to what? Sin square theta. In that case is this term is only n square. If you write shift on this side is it equal to 0? Is it correct? So this small modification will make. So we will assume this term approximately equals to what? n square to the power 1 by 2. So is it only n? Velocity equals to r omega. Omega I will prefer first and then I prefer to write sin theta. So this term I will write first and this term is what? Is it sin 2 theta? So this one is sin of 2 theta divided by this 2 extra and this term is what n square to the power 1 by 2 is same as n r into omega what is the derivative of sin theta is cos theta and this theta and again will come one d theta by dt so this one is d theta by dt plus what is the derivative of sin 2 theta 2 into cos of 2 theta and is it divided by 2n and is it further multiplied by d theta by dt is this fine now this d theta by dt and this theta by dt is it again omega so this omega this omega and this omega so is the acceleration is given by r into omega square First term is what? Cos theta. And what is the second term is? This 2 and 2 cancel. Is it cos of 2 theta divided by n? So this is our final equation of acceleration. And is it consist of two parts? First part is cos theta and second part is what? Cos of 2 theta. By Newton's second law, force is defined equals to what? Mass into acceleration. So is this acceleration consist of m? r omega square cos theta plus m into r into 
omega square is it multiplied by cos of 2 theta divided by n. So total force is it consist of two parts first part and second part. So these are the forces involved is this quantity same as yesterday's centrifugal force. So part of centrifugal force is, is responsible for acceleration of what? Piston. And this one is M is the mass of piston. This one M is the mass of piston or we can say mass of reciprocating mass MR. So total force is consist of two parts, first part and second part. This one is called as primary force. This one is called as secondary force. One is called as primary force and one is called as secondary force. So you have to balance both forces. That is the primary force you have to balance and you have to balance the secondary force also. That is called as complete balancing of reciprocating mass. First of all we will try to balance primary and then later on we will try to balance the primary plus secondary. But first of all my focus will be only on primary.